Hey, it's me. I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind. Free will. Free will. People have debated this forever. Some say we have no free will at all and that everything is fate or destiny. Others believe we have complete free will. And then there's a group that thinks some things are determined by fate while others are up to us. So which one is actually true? Well, let's look at this from a spiritual perspective. If someone believes only in this current life and doesn't think about an existence before or after it, they might believe that some things are fake and others are controlled by free will. They might think we have no choice in where or when we're born, how we'll die, or certain big events in our lives. For someone who believes in the law of cause and effect and reincarnation, that viewpoint doesn't hold up, right? In the grand scheme, each of us has complete free will. Sometimes our free will can't manifest right now because certain factors in this life were actually set in motion by us in previous lives. Those factors are effects caused by actions we took before. Let me give you an example to illustrate this. So imagine a man who's committed a serious crime and is put in prison. Let's say this man loses his memory and he doesn't remember committing the crime. So he finds himself in jail without knowing why. Even if he's told what he did, he can't recall it. But that doesn't change the fact that he committed the crime, right? His lack of memory doesn't erase his actions. Because he can't remember, he might feel that his imprisonment is unfair since he only sees the present moment and not the past actions that led him there. This is similar to how our free will works. When our ability to use free will is limited in some way, it's often because of causes we've set in motion ourselves, even if we don't remember them. Likewise, when we have opportunities to use our free will to our advantage, now in the present, it's often because we've created those chances through our past actions, whether in this life or a previous one. Our current freedom or limitations depend entirely on our past actions, thoughts, and reactions. Some people think that having free will means that they can do whatever they want without any consequences, but that's not how it works. The universe is governed by laws, divine laws, that were created by a higher intelligence. We have the freedom to choose whether or not to follow these laws. If we choose to follow them, we experience happiness, love, harmony, and wisdom, because these laws are designed for our ultimate good. Now, you might say it's hard to follow these divine laws, and I get that. Once we've deviated from them, it can be challenging to get back on track. But for those who have always followed them, or perhaps have gone through the process of purifying themselves, cleaning their inner world, so to speak, it's not as difficult. The struggle comes from the process of purifying ourselves and aligning back with these laws. Okay, so that brings us to the idea of punishment. Like many people rebel against the thought of a God who punishes. The thing is, it's not about arbitrary punishment. It's about the natural consequences of our actions. If we stray from the laws designed for our well-being, we naturally experience discomfort or unhappiness. This discomfort is actually a remedy, though. It motivates us to realign with the laws that bring us true happiness. Think about people who live comfortably but feel like something's missing. They might not seek deeper understanding or growth until something shakes up their lives. Sometimes it's through hardship that we find the drive to search for more meaning and improve ourselves. Real happiness doesn't come from external circumstances, which we can't always control. It comes from within, by developing ourselves, healing our inner selves, and aligning with divine laws. Unfortunately, we often don't take steps towards this inner work unless something pushes us to do so. It's important to remember that any unpleasant experiences we're going through 
aren't sent by some willful act of a higher power to make us suffer. They're the natural outcomes of our past deviations from the path meant for our highest good. We might not remember the causes, especially if they stem from a past life, but they're there. By acknowledging and working on our faults and weaknesses now, we can begin the process of healing and realigning with those divine laws. This leads to willpower and how we direct it. So we've been talking a lot about willpower. We often wonder when we should push forward and when we should let go and accept things as they are. The key is to first desire to fulfill the will of a higher power, whatever that means for you. By seeking to understand and align with that will, we gain inner peace. You might have goals and desires in your life, and that's awesome. Wanting to do your best in your profession or your personal life is amazing. That's a good thing. And it's important to examine our motives. Are we driven by vanity or selfishness? Are we genuinely aiming to contribute positively to the world? By being honest with ourselves about our true motivations, we can redirect our willpower in a way that flows freely and brings us peace rather than tension. There's a difference between willing something from our minds and willing it from our deeper selves, from our souls. When we will from the mind alone, it can create stress and disconnect us from our true selves. But when we will from our soul, it's a powerful, peaceful force that aligns us with our true purpose. Now, I know this can be a lot to take in, and it might even sound a bit abstract. But if you take some time to reflect on it, you might start to see how these ideas play out in your own life. It's about becoming more aware of our inner selves, our true motivations, and how we can align our will with a higher purpose to find real happiness and true fulfillment. I hope this gives you something to think about here if you want to talk more about it. I love you. Let's connect soon.